Okay, linear permutations is the topic of today, and that's exactly what it sounds like is exactly what it is. So it's arrangements of things on a line, and how many ways can you do it? So let's begin. Uh, if I want to take a look, for example, at how many ways letters in the word cat can be arranged. So I've listed them all right here. And you can see that we've got a total of six ways to do that. And then if you look at the number of ways we can arrange the letters in the word B, you'll notice there's three different arrangements, not six. So in this case, we notice that we have, if you will, Three choices for the first guy, two choices for the next guy, one for the last. We did this before, like how many different ways can we arrange three books on a shelf. Because there's a repeat right here, it decreases the number of ways we can distinguish the different arrangements because E is the exact same look as E. So anyways, if we were to take and derive a meaning for this or some kind of a formula, the number of different permutations of n different objects where you have a certain number of indistinguishable objects is given by the following. So you take the total number of numbers, factorial, and divide that by the indistinguishable number of repeats for however many they are factorial. So in this case, we have three factorial, and in the word B, there are two indistinguishable E's. So I divide three factorial by two factorial, and we get three, two, one, divided by two, one, and that ends up being three. Thus, the problem is done. So if we take a look at the number of different ways we can arrange the letters in the word eerie, then we know we have six total letters, and the E is indistinguishable, and it's repeated three times. So we say over three factorial. This is six, five, four, three, two, one, over. These are all multiplied, we know. 3 times 2 times 1. So we reduce that down to 120. Similar type problem, you've got 25 Christmas lights, 10 are blue, 5 red, 4 green, 6 yellow. And we assume each of these types of bulbs are indistinguishable from one another based on the color. So we have 25 factorial total arrangements. We have 10 indistinguishable blue guys. So that's 10 factorial we divide by, 5 factorial, 4 factorial, and 6 factorial. You can do all that on your calculator, which I'm not going to do right here. Just make sure that you group the entire denominator in a set of parentheses. So now we're going to take a look at the word Shakespeare, much like we did before with Erie, except we have multiple indistinguishable items in this case. So in Shakespeare, we have a total of five, six, seven, eleven letters. We see the S is repeated twice. We see the A is repeated twice. And we see the E is repeated one, two, three times. And again, calculate a problem. Make sure you divide by all of these at one time, so put parentheses around it. 
Okay, so this is a little bit different. You got a banquet table, and typically a banquet table is a long straight table. You got two senators, two ambassadors, and three mayors. And first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to seat them by title. All right, and we want to know how many ways we can do this. Well, by title means by senators, by ambassadors, by mayors. So these in turn are indistinguishable. If we were seating just person by person, then all those people would be distinguishable. In other words, we'd have seven factorial different ways to seat them, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. But since we're seating them by title, every title is indistinguishable. So a senator is a senator is a senator, and you can't tell the difference between them. So for the first part, we're going to take, it's part A. We're going to take the total number of people, which is seven factorial, over the repeats of senators, ambassadors, and mayors. And that problem can be done once again on your calculator. Now we're going to ask how many ways can they be seated if the senators have to sit at the two ends. So here's the deal. I've got seven spots on a table. And we know that the senators have to be at these two ends, and they're indistinguishable. So whether they change seats or not, that's not a new arrangement because we're seating them by title once again. So if it's a senator, is a senator, is a senator, they just have to be on the two ends, which means we're really only dealing with these five spots. And if we're seating again by title, then we have five spots we have to deal with over three factorial and two factorial. So that's a little change on the basic problem. You just have to read it carefully. So now we've got a situation where we've got a bag containing uh, poker chips. I guess, and uh, you've got seven white and three red chips. You're going to select three in one clump, and how many ways can three chips be drawn from the total of ten chips? And we have three separate circumstances that we're going to take a look at. The first is we get two chips that are white, one chip that's red. So this is now kind of a, a choosing, it, it, it's a grouping type of problem. All right, so we want to ensure that two chips are going to be white and one's going to be red. So again, this is a counting situation. It's a little bit of a different situation in that we aren't concerned anymore about order. So I've kind of mixed in within this permutation a little bit of combination for you now. So we have 7C2 to ensure that we have white chips and 3C1 to ensure we have a red chip. And again, it's like a counting principle, so we would multiply those two together. For part B, we want to ensure that we have all the chips are white. So that's taking only from those seven chips and choosing three will ensure that we have just white chips. The third case, all of them are red, we have three choose three. So next, we've got uh, 200 students attending a school dance and they've each got tickets for a door prize and three numbers are chosen. We wanna know how many ways there are to award the three different prizes. There's usually a grand prize, a second prize, and a third prize. So these have distinct order involved in them. The first person chosen will be the highest prize, the next person, next highest prize, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a permutation problem. And we have 200 total items of which we're arranging three. Next example, we've got 
12 workers in a cafeteria to crew and they rotate among three different jobs and we want to know how many ways can the crew be assigned the jobs of two cooks, seven servers, and three dishwashers. And again, this problem is a little bit different from the standard because we're picking from all 12 workers initially. And when we do that, we start with 12 workers and we're choosing two cooks to begin with. So from those 12, we choose two cooks. Once we've chosen those two cooks, we're now down to 10 workers to pick from. So we take those 10 and we choose seven from them to be our servers. And then from there, we only have three people left and they will be our dishwashers. And that's how we set that problem up. That's going to be it for the day. There are your questions to answer. And uh, we will discuss this a little bit more tomorrow. Again, commutations, permutations, once we get into probability, this is some of the harder math we're going to be doing, only because it's kind of hard to make it tangible. It's kind of hard to put out all those different combinations or permutations on a piece of paper for you to see and check. So you're going to have to have a good understanding on are we talking about order, non-order, are we talking about grouping, or arrangements. So do your best, and again, we'll uh, go over these problems tomorrow in class.